This is going to be a quick RFID update, and I wanted to bring to you some more information from a recent article that was published from accessa.co.uk. So this is coming out of um, the United Kingdom. That's www.accessa.co.uk. Uh, and this is called the RFID tipping point. And you know when people use that term, tipping point, they're talking about it's a point of no return, basically. Point of no return. It's a tipping point. It means you've crossed over into something different here. Uh, this is what it starts out to say. This came out on a, a September 21st, 2016 of this year, so it's fairly new. Uh, I'll show you the picture here of this person paying with their right hand, and they have a wristband with a microchip in it. And I'll show you that in a minute from this article. But this is... Uh, called the tipping point. It came out on the 21st. This person's paying with their right hand with a wristlet. It says here, RFID means increased revenue for festivals. So why are UK organizers reluctant to make the leap? So because people have, there's still been an outcry from people about um, privacy issues. So a lot of this uh, outcry is still happening, which I'm thankful for. Uh, but eventually it will go that way, according to Revelation 13, which I will read you in just a, a moment. It says here, the system has faced an uphill struggle in its quest to become a mainstay at UK events, in part due to an incident, an incident at, uh, at download in 2015 when the festival's entire cashless system crashed unexpectedly. The failure of the download system can sometimes be a source of frustration for RFID professionals, it says. I often compare what we do to the airline industry, he tells Access. You only ever hear about the planes that crash. You don't hear about the thousands that are flying every second of the day. So they're saying that this is just a glitch in the system. But this article goes on to say, um, the story now more than a, uh, one year on is much more positive, so much so that both Graham, Graymo and Jennifer, or Jenner, I'm sorry, the, um, the people that they're interviewing here, believe 2016 could be a turning point for RFID in the UK. And he goes on to say here, once you use RFID, you don't go back, Grimo says. I'm going to show you that here. So once you implement this, nobody's going to want to go back. Once you try the convenience, the, the peace, the safety of it, you're not going to want to go back. So again, this person's using a, a wristband with a microchip implanted in the wristband. And you can read this article to see for yourself. Which takes me to a very old commercial. This commercial came out probably, I'd say, 10 years ago, maybe. But it's relevant for today, and I will play this for you. It's relevant for today, and I, before I play you this video, I want to read to you from Revelation 13. All right, from Revelation 13, starting in verse 16. He causes all, meaning, meaning the Antichrist, the man of sin, who heads the beast system, and he will head the financial system very soon. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man may buy or sell except he who has the mark of the beast, the number of the beast, or the number of his name. Now, what could be the number of his name? I want to show you that and what I'm getting this, where I'm getting this from. We understand that a microchip implanted on the skin and the right hand of the forehead will prevent you in this new beast financial system from buying or selling. But what does it mean to have the number of his name? I want to show you something here that I thought was significant that you can look into yourself. All right. Vicarious Feely Dei, uh, written in Latin, adds up in Latin because numerical values were assigned in Latin or are assigned in Latin to the letters of the alphabet. And each letter, even Hebrew did this or has done this, each letter has a numerical value. And when John said, here is wisdom, let him who has wisdom calculate the number of the beast. So what does it mean to have the number of his name? Well, let's look at this. This might help us a little bit here, if you can see that clearly enough. I don't know if you've seen this picture online or not, but if you notice here, vicarious, feely, day, all these numbers add up to what? The number of the beast. And you can do more research on this than the name of the Pope of the line of the dynasty of the papacy, Vicarious Feely Day, which literally means a substitute for the Son of God. The word vicar means substitute or in place of. So what you're seeing here is someone coming in the name of Christ. And when you claim to be Christ's substitute on earth, do you realize you're claiming to be God? Jesus is God in the flesh, 
He came to this world, became man. Isaiah 9, 6 says, uh, the son to be given, the son to be born, to be called the mighty God, the everlasting father. So the son of God claimed to be God when he was on this earth. He said, before Abraham was, I am claiming the name of God. If you come to be the stand-in, the substitute for, or the replacement of Christ, or the son of God, aren't you claiming to be God? Yes, you are. So these letters that add up to the number of his name, there you go. There's the number, there's his name, or those who have the number of his name. That is why the Lord says in Revelation, come out of her, my people, that you may not be partakers of her sin. So this man that institutes the mark of the beast um, has implemented this financial system, and to be a part of that or hook your body to that, uh, God warns against that and says that there are eternal consequences to aligning yourself with taking the number of his name, which means to be affiliated with that beast system or that Vatican Roman Catholic, Roman Catholic system, because that's aligning yourself with the number of his name, in my opinion. Now, God is calling out many Catholics to come out of that system. Uh, my husband is one of them. Praise God. Uh, he, uh, he and I met, and within five years of our marriage, my husband um, became a born-again Christian, and God drew him to have a personal relationship with him. But getting back to this, I want to play you this video uh, from NBC News, I believe it was, um, and it was on the RFID implants that will be coming within the next few years. Granted, this has not been fully implemented yet, but it's a very prophetic news broadcast of what is to come, according to Revelation chapter 13. So let me get this up for you. More now of our special coverage here tonight, life in the U.S. in 10 years' time. By that go. time, there may be all kinds of new ways to safeguard and identify all those things that make each of us unique, our faces, even our fingerprints, even our eyes. Here now with more on the future of technology, NBC's Tom Costello. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history, but thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. The technology is based on answering one simple question. Am I who I say I am? Already, fingerprints and iris scans verify passenger identities at airports. Within 10 years, that technology may be even more widespread. And look for more complex facial recognition programs that scan a crowd of thousands looking for a single terrorist. Today's facial recognition software starts with the eyes. Then, it maps out the contours of the face and compares that against a database of millions. A database that's growing by the day. What's next? At the University of Bath in England, researchers predict big changes for consumers. I think it is possible to free us completely of our wallets and keys using biometric technology, if that's what people want in 10 years' time. In fact, it's already here. The latest home security locks use fingerprints to control deadbolts. And at the Jewel Osco grocery store in Chicago, some customers pay using their fingerprints. No paper or plastic. You don't really need anything other than your hand, and you already got that with you. So will future department stores scan our irises, like in the movie Minority Report, then offer products catered to who we are? Hello, Mr. Yakamoto. Welcome back to the Gap. Experts say that technology is here now. The challenge is to safeguard our privacy in a brave new world. Tom Costello, NBC News, Alexandria, Virginia. Hmm, in a brave new world? I think we know what that new world is all about, don't we? So that's just my update for you. Apparently, like I said, according to this one article that I read you a little bit ago, um, we're reaching a tipping point, and this was put out from the UK and on September 21st of this year. We're reaching a tipping point. There's a point of no return. That once people get a taste of this RFID technology, how convenient it is, uh, the safeguards that it, it purports to offer, there's no turning back. And if you doubt this, look at Revelation chapter 13. So we want nothing to do with having a microchip implant or any kind of mark on us at all, on us or in us, in our right hand or foreheads or even in the left hand. It doesn't matter. It's your hand or your forehead where you can be scanned or have to pay scanning. I'm against even using my fingerprints on my phone to access my, my bank information, which my phone has offered me. And I'm against that. I'm not registering my the part, of, a part of my body, which is the temple of God, with my financial institution. So, but again, each one has his own conviction before God. But I wanted to just bring this to you as an update. 
keep your eyes open, keep your uh, keep checking on RFID technology, um, and avoid taking the number of his name. This is the number of his name. God bless you. Thank you for listening today.